buddies who share a knack for offensive innovation and a never-ending battle for respect. Price is Washington State Cougars with a surprise team of the Pac-10 this year. Picked to finish last in the conference, the Cougs, catapulted by Price's high-octane offense and never-say-die attitude, battled for the league title and are on the verge of only their third 10-win season in history. Last year, Purdue rode a cool breeze all the way to the Rose Bowl. With the departure of the remarkable breeze, the winds of fortune shifted this year for the Boilermakers. Still, Joe Tiller's vaunted offense had enough gale force to produce yet another winning season and a school record fifth straight bowl appearance. Purdue and Joe Tiller, Washington State and Mike Price, friendly rivals in a West Texas Bowl showdown. style play to a special tune a special flavor as well as we're happy to present again this afternoon the Wells Fargo Sun Bowl from El Paso Texas first meeting ever between teams from the Pac-10 and the Big Ten Washington State and the Boilermakers of Purdue We welcome you to El Paso. Purdue coming in with a six and five record and the Cougars of Washington State a great year, a nine and two mark after the 11 game regular season had been concluded. And good afternoon everybody, I'm Vern Lundquist. This game first played in El Paso in 1935, first televised on CBS in 1968 and we have been pleased to present it to you every year since our 34th straight telecast of the Sun Bowl from El Paso. I'm joined as always by Todd Blackledge. A fun week for all of us, Todd, and these two teams really are mirror-like in, in the, how they play the game. Well, they are. I mean, the head coaches kind of trace their roots back together. Offensively, very similar. One back sets, three and four wide receiver formations like to spread the field. They run the ball a little bit, but they really emphasize the passing game. On the other side of the ball, smallish defenses built for speed, very aggressive. Both these teams started blitzing the quarterback as soon as they got off the bus. Well, there is, however, a decided difference in the experience of the quarterback mm -hmm. position. And that's going to be key today. Purdue's Kyle Orton, a very talented guy, but he's a true freshman just making his third start. Jason Gesser, a much more seasoned quarterback, but make no mistake, both of these guys will be under tremendous pressure today. Both teams will go after the quarterback. The key is which guy can make the most plays one-on-one -on -one against that pressure defense. Both the Cougars and the Boilermakers do feature aggressive defenses. They've excelled at taking the ball away. Yeah, two of the best in the country at forcing turnovers, but one problem, you've got to be able to convert when you force turnovers. Washington State got 93 points off of their 35 turnovers, but a problem for Purdue all year. Second best in the country forcing 36 turnovers, only 68 points. The five games they lost this year, they forced 18 turnovers, but can only muster 25 points. Tough thing to do when you play that well on defense. For the Washington State Cougars, head coach Mike Price is known for developing good football coaches. On his current staff, he has three defensive line coach Rob Adke, offensive coordinator Mike Leffenseller, and quarterback coach Aaron Taylor Price. His son are currently on his coaching staff. Coach Price's roots can also be traced to the Purdue bench, whereas head coach Joe Tiller, as you guys mentioned, was his offensive coordinator from 1989 to 1990. Assistant coaches Blaine Bennett and Gary Emanuel have also coached under Price. Guys with so many coaches having ties with Coach Price, you just wonder if they're going to know which sideline to go to today. Over to Jill Arrington on the Purdue sideline. Well, thank you, Andre. This Purdue team has changed a lot. Last year's Purdue total offense ranked fourth in the nation. This year they're 105th. The biggest reason for the change is an inexperienced offense. They lost quarterback Drew Brees and four offensive linemen to the NFL. The coach Chiller told his team that he's proud of what they've accomplished and a win today would be a great springboard to next year. Vern? All right. Jason Gesser now the fourth highest uh, achieving quarterback in Washington State history. See the season he had 2700 29 yards, 25 touchdowns, and only 10 interceptions. A junior from Honolulu, Hawaii. And the one back set, two wide receivers. From the 20, there's the toss left to Dave Minnick. And Minnick is popped immediately and loses a yard as Nico Kudavides got to him first, number 34. Let's check 
officially. Slip the ball inside to Dave Minnick, and he struggles for three. Let's check the uh, Purdue defensive 11. Up front, it'll be Phillips, Terrell, Brandon Johnson starts for Matt Mitrione, who decided to end his collegiate career. Gudavides, Odom, and Landon Johnson. And in the uh, secondary, Woodyard, Schweiger, Farrell, and Rogers. One of the things that you look at with a new offensive line is sack numbers. Look at the last three years compared to this year. One out of 11 pass attempts resulted in a sack. Now, some of that's the offensive line. Some of it is a new quarterback as well, because sometimes quarterbacks hang on to the football longer than they should. And from the 11, Gesser, Nance is out of trouble, heads left, pulls up and lobs it out, and that one nearly picked off. Very dangerous. Farrell was very close to yeah. him. Jason Gesser, one of the things that Purdue coaches were really impressed with him about is his ability to make plays out of the system, you know, when the play breaks down. Watch Jason Gesser leave the pocket. At first, it looks like he's going to run, and then he decided, stay behind the line of scrimmage, see if I can make a play. I think Idell got a, a hand on the football, and Deontay Farrell almost came up with a big interception for Purdue. Third and seven. For Washington State, they lead it by seven on a uh, return of an interception by Jason David. Here's Gesser. Intercepted. That one's picked off. I think Washington State got it back. Rodgers with the interception and then the fumble. Yes, indeed. This was a blitz by Purdue. They brought the safeties, and Antoine Rodgers makes the interception, and Mike Bush, the basketball player, who was the intended receiver, is going to strip the ball. Watch it, Bush after the play. Strip the ball out of Antoine Rogers, and Washington State comes back up with the football. There's the interception. Mike Bush, the right hand over the top, strips it out, and a big break for the Cougars. So back-to-back -back turnovers in the same play, the interception and then the fumble. And a first down 10 results at the 29-yard line. Here's Gesser. Oh, what a blitz. That's a fault. No, they're calling that incomplete. Arm was coming forward, but... Aiken Adell got there. Their best pass rusher, their MVP. Eight sacks coming into the ball game today. He's coming from the left of your screen. Just a quick inside move. Ran right by Joey Hollenbeck, the left guard. A little twist move, which brought the end inside. And you saw the quickness and the explosiveness of Adell. Adell, one of 17 young men from the state of Texas who play for Purdue. He uh, played his high school ball at Irving MacArthur, already a graduate of Purdue University. Now well, Purdue with a 5-1 uh, and one season start, and uh, they were very productive offensively. They have struggled the last five games, as you can see. And the coaches really felt, even though Brandon Hans had some good games in there at, at early points in the year, that the offense had really started to get stagnant, and that's why they made the choice to go to Kyle Orton late in the year and said he belongs in Pullman. He was very entertaining talking about how much he loves playing at Washington State. Didn't enjoy that play. Battles at both ends. Schweigert with the blitz and he got to Gesser's middle about the time he let it go. Yeah, nice coverage that time. Against the blitz, it's man to man. We talked about the pressure on Kyle Orton, but Purdue turning up the heat on Jason Gesser. Didn't quite handle the snap clean. The blitz by Schweigert. And a nice third down play by the Purdue Boilermakers. First gets this one out to the 41-yard line and puts a period to an impressive drive. Here's Schweigert coming. The catch is made by Jerome Riley. There's a fumble wow. picked up. And here goes Purdue. What a play by Gesser. Landon Johnson picks it up with a counterpunch. I mean, this is excellent defense by Purdue. A huge hit, they ripped the ball out. Joe Odom from the back is going to get a huge hit, and Brandon Johnson's trying to rip the ball up from the front. Watch the end of this play. Now, 65, Brandon Johnson, he's trying to rip the ball out. Watch Odom hit him in the back, and the ball pops out. But then Jason Gesser saves a touchdown. I mean, there's four guys there could have blocked Gesser, and nobody makes a block on Gesser. And Landon Johnson not able to get this one in the end zone. An excellent play by Purdue. 
but good hustle by Jason Gesson. And after the fumble, I'm impressed with this Purdue defense. I, I really am. And it, you know, this is an offense that has struggled all year, but a defense that has been really good. They're very fast. They're not very big, but they have made play after play all season long. That's the end of the first quarter with our score, 14 nothing. We'll return to El Paso right after this message and a word from your local station. We welcome you back to the Sun Bowl in El Paso on a cloudy afternoon. 14-0 Washington State leading Purdue. They got the first touchdown on a 45-yard interception return, then a 46-yard pass, but Purdue now threatens after a fumble return of its own. Here's Orton into the flat left side. Taylor Stubblefield, the tackle is made almost immediately at the eight-yard line. Taylor Stubblefield with uh, the tackle. Vern Lundquist along with Todd Blackledge here at the Sun Bowl. We talked about turnovers yeah. at the uh, beginning of the broadcast. And look what's happening. Yeah, well, Purdue three turnovers. Washington State converts it into 14 points. Washington State's turned it over twice. So far, Purdue hasn't been able to convert, but they got a great opportunity now. See what they can do on this second down play. Third down play. Third and one. Dortch will kick off. Ray Guy award winner this year. Hunter and place kicker and a kickoff man. And this one taken back from the one yard line by Bill Newman. Tackle is made out at the 21 yard line. And it is time not start today game, today's game. He uh, was in the doghouse with the coaches for some critical comments he made. That one's going to be incomplete as Kegel is popped. Landon Johnson got there, and Derek Roche is very slow getting up. Number 77. Well, I tell you, you, you just can't say enough about this Purdue defense. They carried this team all year. Landon Johnson, who we saw had the fumble recovery early, that time gets to the quarterback, but it's a, a defense that over the last five years under Joe Tiller has been made a stop here. could be huge for the Boilermakers. Gesser with the audible. He's got four wide outs. Here comes the blitz, and Gesser has to hurry it. Incomplete. A lot of safety blitzes by Purdue. They're covering up the inside linemen and then dropping them out. But watch this. They cover these guys up and then bring the safeties and drop a lineman out. So they're really not selling the farm, but they're bringing safeties in spots that there's nobody there to block them. And Brady Doe, the backup strong safety, is the first guy to get the guess. He'll go for Travis Dorch. And he will now kick off. Coleman drifts back and takes it a yard in. He'll bring it out. He will bring it out to the 23-yard line. Nice return. Travis Dorch notices Bush goes wide right. Scott Lund has come in as a wide receiver as well, number 22. Here comes the blitz. Guesser steps up. Hit and dropped at the 41-yard line. Speed. Aiken Adele. Yeah, I mean, you know, they're, they're in the shotgun this time, and yet Gesser's still not able to get anything going. Here's Gesser. Here comes the blitz. The pressure again. Enormous. And the ball is intercepted. That, that was like a punt. I mean, Jason Gesser just, he just reared back and threw it almost straight up in the air, hoping that uh, it would go far enough against the blitz. But... It's the pressure. The pressure that Purdue has been able to generate has frustrated Jason Gesser. Now watch, these receivers are going down the field, and Gesser's just going to launch it and see if one of them can come down with it, almost like a Hail Mary throw, but it hung up in the air so long that the interception was able to be made by Purdue, coming all the way across the field. Jacques Reeves, number 28, another of the Texas connection. He's from Lancaster, Texas. And his second interception of the season. Coach Tiller, your team was down 14 nothing early in the first quarter. It could have gotten ugly, but you fought back. Now you've taken the league. What do you say about the character of this team today? Well, we'll find out when the game's all over, but it's great to be able to come back like this. I think our guys are, are into the game emotionally, which really helps us, certainly. But it always helps when that quarterback performs well, and he's doing that right now. Your defense is playing exceptional, but you said the offense. They're really getting into their rhythm. What can we expect to see in the second half? I hope more of the same. We would like to continue 
to throw the football and run it. And, 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 and we've been good with our snap count. I think that's one of the things that's been impressive about him. We've got him to jump off sides a number of times. All right, Coach, thanks a lot. Four Purdue turnovers, three of them have been picks. And after that interception, it's first down at the 28-yard line. Here comes Jason Gesser, who uh, was blitzed early and often. Quick flip out, left side, caught by Riley. Riley's got some room. And he is tackled inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. As we get underway here in the third quarter of play, Vermontquist along with Todd Blackledge, and uh, the turnovers really have been uh, turnovers and defensive pressure to score. Yeah, the pressures. I mean, the teams, and Mike Price was exactly right. They're playing the same way. Both defenses are going after the quarterback. The difference in the first half, particularly in the second quarter, Purdue's quarterback, Kyle Orton, was able to handle the pressure and make plays. Jason Gesser was not able to, and we saw right away what Mike Price was talking about strategy-wise. Quicker throws to defeat the blitz. Here's a quick setup, and the pass almost picked off. That one almost went the other way. Deontay Farrell had unimpeded territory had he been able to hold on. And again, Jason Gesser picking himself off, off the Sun Bowl Stadium turf at the end of that play. This is a little quick throw to McElrath, trying to get him involved in the game. It's a long throw from the left hash to that side of the field. And Farrell almost comes down with the interception. But McElrath, very, very quiet in this football game. Second down and 10. And the quick set up. That one tipped away again. It's Farrell who got a hand up in front of McElrath. And, and Jason Gesser does not look confident to me right now. He kind of double clutched on that one. He, he didn't just plant his foot and make the throw. And you see what they've been able to do to him. Only one sack, but a lot of times in his face, hurrying him, and that time he just kind of hesitantly tried to throw that one in there to McElrath. He's not in a rhythm right now the way that Kyle Orton was in a rhythm. In the red zone this season, 30 touchdowns, 11 field goals, third and 10, blitz coming, deep in the corner, McElrath is there and can't make the catch. Well, they had what they wanted. They had the matchup. Their top receiver, McElrath, against a strong safety, Deontay Farrell. This favors the wide receiver, and he runs right by Farrell. It's not even close, but guests are just a little too far on the football. And again, he is just not as sharp right now as I've seen him earlier in the year. Let's go back and uh, check the halftime stats, Todd. Well, in a lot of ways, even when you look at turnovers, but total yards, that's the one, 139 yards for Washington State. This is a team that coming in was averaging nearly 440 yards a game, one of the top offenses in the Pac-10 Conference. So much credit to the Purdue defense in that first half, slowing down this Cougar offense. <laughs> this guy's in, in deep trouble. <laughs> Going through some real transformations right there. <laughs> yeah, but he'll rise above it. Oh, dear. Two on the return. You just got to keep your head about you. Every time, every now and then, you need a little kick in the butt. By Jason Gesser, who's been productive all year. Second down, quarterback draw. Gesser to the one-yard line. He did not get in. He was very close. He's a very mobile guy. He's a design play. He's got a lead block. Easy for you to say. Yeah. <laughs> not able to get the football across the goal line, though. At that point, he tried to reach out, not able to uh, extend the football across the plane. But inside the one. First down now, 27-20, Washington State with the lead. Guesser and Purdue with a delayed rush. Gesser goes deep left side. Got McElrath. Nice pass. Laid it out and McElrath with the grab. About the last two or three throws, Jason Gesser has looked like the way Jason Gesser looked this season. He's had his feet up underneath him. He's looked comfortable in the pocket. And he's made the accurate throw. The pump fake, the out and up by McElrath, and a perfect throw. Here's McElrath in the slots, a little out and up or a wheel route, and he runs by the linebacker, and a nice throw. That's a gain of 32. Here's Gesser, left side, Riley, inside the 15 of the 13-yard line. 
Stewart Schweigert with the tackle, the free safety. Here's Riley. The blitz went right off of him. So the man, he knows he's going to probably get the football as a hot receiver because the blitz was the guy that lined up over top of him. Yeah, both nine touchdowns. And they both can go up and get the football in the crowd. Second and ten, reverse. McElrath goes right. He's weaving his way inside the 30 and down at the 25. That's a gain of 13. And Washington State is assuming control of this game. A little reverse. We haven't seen this from Washington State. Another way to take some of that aggressiveness away from a team. Jerome Riley, another wide receiver with the block, but a well-designed play. And threatening now with the second down and five. Gesser looking right, goes deep right side, and that one is intercepted in the end zone. Rodgers. Antoine Rodgers. Well, this was a bad decision by Jason Gesser. He thought he had single coverage, man coverage, and it was really not man because Rodgers was just kind of drifting back there, and he came off of the early or the inside route and just drifted back with the quarterback. Watch, this is Rodgers. Now, he's not going to stay with Mike Bush. He's going to keep drifting back on this corner route. He doesn't stay short. He reads the quarterback and drifts right back to where the football is and makes the interception. Gesser thought he had single coverage to McElrath, but he ended up throwing into double coverage. And 10 at the 39. Left side, Dave Minnick. And he busts loose inside the 30. And let's check in once again with Andre Ware. Guys, all the pressure that Jason Getz was seeing all afternoon, he's not going to throw for a high percentage. But what it does, it allows him to throw outside to one-on-one -on -one to McElrath and Bush. He's doing a fine job in the second half of completing those passes down the sideline in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Back up to you guys. Well, time now for the CBS Sportsline stat of the game. We talked about this at the very beginning of the broadcast. Forced turnovers, both teams capable of, of uh, takeaways, but who could capitalize with points off those turnovers? And you see Washington State, 20 points on the five. And Purdue, only seven on the four. Get because if, if they would have played and Washington State would have won, there's a good chance that Oregon would have been the number two team playing against Miami in the Rose Bowl. So either way, that game when it was all said and done, was a huge game that was never played uh, for the end of the season. On second down, Dave Minnick is caught for a loss at the 38-yard line. 69. Orton, deep left side. There's Stubblefield, got it! Touchdown! 51 yards! Don't go anywhere yet, folks. <laughs> We're within a touchdown. And this is prevent defense. A four-man rush picked up easily by Purdue, and then you just don't let this happen at this point in the game. Eric Coleman just let Stubblefield run by him. And if anything, you want to keep everything in front of you with a 13-point lead. Doors for the extra point. Got it. One hundred and ninety five yards for Taylor Stubblefield, a new Sun Bowl record. Well, they hit the big play to Stubblefield earlier in the game on a similar route down the seam. It was our Exxon and Mobile virtual playbook, the seam route, and uh, Stubblefield for the second time makes the connection with Kyle Orton. Now formation, too, for Purdue. Have to move the ball back uh, an inch and a half to make it legal. It's Dorsch. There's the hands got team. It. Purdue's got it. Billy Newman for Washington State tried to catch it, and he had the first shot at it, but could not make a clean catch. And Seth Morales of Purdue is who's going to come up with it. The kick by Dorch, it goes up in the air, and Billy Newman 
is right there, goes off his helmet, and Seth Morales right there to collect the football. You want that ball to take a high bounce, which it did, and Billy Newman not able to make the play.